not every teaching professional is right for every single player and you have to find the right one for you and then move forward with them. Hey guys, welcome back to the Match Play Podcast. I'm Dr. Jeff Billauer and this is my buddy Bill. Today we're going to be talking about uh, how to unlock your golf potential and how to choose the right teaching professional for you. It's really important today to understand that we're going to be talking about choosing a golf instructor based off their teaching style, their communication skills, and their compatibility with your learning goals. So Bill, can you tell me about uh, the importance of choosing a teaching professional based off of their qualifications and their credentials, like a PGA yeah. teaching professional versus someone that might not have those credentials? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, there's a lot to be said in terms of choosing the proper person for the job, so to say. It's just like finding a mechanic, a doctor, whatever. You know, we, we want to understand how long they've been doing this. We want to understand and full their teaching styles. And while it's while people with a PGA background or a PGA teaching credential will obviously know what the heck they're talking about. There's a lot of guys out there that have a stable of PGA tour pros, stable of college dudes and don't have PGAs. Butch Harmon comes to mind, George Gankis, you know, these guys are world renowned coaches, but aren't specifically affiliated with the PGA. Now it's going to be a whole lot easier for you guys to find a, a good professional in your town by looking for that PGA license. There's a lot more of them out there and they are taught to kind of teach, you know, the game of golf in a constructive manner to not only get you better, but get you, get your scores lowering. Would you agree with that, Jeff? Yeah, absolutely. I think that the fact that they get a degree in teaching itself is huge because a lot of people have difficulty speaking with public speaking and stuff like that. So having someone that has gone through repetitions and years of actually learning how to teach the game is already putting them up slightly above a lot of other people in terms of teaching. But you, you got to say that there's something to some of those coaches that don't have that credential and have a great stable of players because they kind of learned it through trial and error themselves. And sometimes that's a good teaching experience for them to be an even better teacher in a sense. So I, yeah, I, absolutely, because it gives them a different perspective, and depending on who you are, what kind of caliber of player you are, having a different perspective <laughs> other than the PGA style of instruction can go a long way to helping you get from, say, you know, and this is typically better, you know, the course of a better player, um, you know, get to that, say, you know, five handicap down to the scratch into the plus because we're getting a different perspective and a different way to work on things. Yeah. Moving forward on that, on experience and expertise, I know when I was starting out in golf, I obviously had no understanding of the game completely, so it was easy in my mindset of trying to pick a, a teaching professional that had a high level of skill and a lot of experience, that I was trying to find someone that had more experience or expertise than myself and could shoot low scores because that's what I wanted to do. And as I got better in the game, it got harder and harder to find them, and it became less of trying to find someone better than me and someone that I could learn from in that sense, and more about someone that knew the real in-depth knowledge of the swing, the data, and stuff like that as launch monitors came out. And so now for me, selecting a golf coach, it comes more down to what do they, what are their teaching styles, what's their philosophy, what tech do they have, less about how good of a golfer they actually are, more about the knowledge that they have and how they can pass that on to me. Absolutely. And first and foremost, it's just understanding that and digesting what that what that instructor brings to the table for you and you know if we're looking on the other side of things you know you probably don't want to go with somebody that just has a terrible golf swing promoting themselves as a teacher because chances are they've never played at a high caliber um while they might know a lot it's always nice to under you know if, you, if you're the type of person that's more of a visual learner, you kind of want somebody that's going to be able to show as well as explain. So it's always best to have a little bit better player. And we're not talking tour level stuff, you know, anything like that. But somebody that can play even to, you know, sub 80, you know, 75 pretty regular couple, you know, single, single digit handicap kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. As long as they put in the time to you know, learn the swing and understand how it would relate to not only their golf game, but to everybody else's, how to teach it is kind of what you're looking for as far as those PGA guys. Um, and if you don't know this, a PGA pro is m very different from a, pl a playing professional as there are two different categories here. We got one guy that's trying to play for himself and the other that's gathering knowledge and uh, 
trying to get everybody else around him better. So. Yeah. The old, I remember the old saying is if they couldn't play, they teach. Um, and, yeah, exactly that. And, and some of that has validity, but obviously not every tour professional, meaning PGA Tour professional guys playing on tour, has the eye and the ability to teach the game. It's not Absolutely. just it's not in their repertoire. Whereas a PGA teaching professional, they might not have the game to play on the PGA Tour, but they have the knowledge and potentially some game to mix together to give you the knowledge and information you need to improve your swing because they have the eye look that that notices that small detail and flaw in your swing and they can uh figure out a way to teach you or create a drill that you can do to correct it and that's that's really what you want to look for you want to look for someone that has the ability to notice those flaws and decipher whether it's actually a flaw or something that's going to bring your swing to the next level and accentuate it or someone that's saying hey we do need to take care of this, and that's the problem that's causing the misses that, we're, that, you're, that you're seeing or the problems with ball contact or not being able to get into the slot. So that's what you really want to be looking for in your, in your teaching professional, whether they're a PGA teaching professional or someone that just grew up in the game, knows exactly what they're talking about, and has that eye. And sometimes that's just skill that they pick up and something they're born with. So, again, that's just – it's the – intricacies of picking a teaching professional that's right for you that that we want to help you find today um, yeah and to and to just point there you know you know just what you just said a, a second ago finding somebody that can relate to you and getting to understand not only how they're telling you to swing this golf club or explaining the benefits and the in, inconsistencies that it might how it might relate to you you want to make sure that you understand every little point and this goes back to my former statement but you want to find uh, when we're talking about like pga pga teaching professionals all those guys know what the heck they're talking about every single one of them they went to school for it they trained for it they're good that's why they have the title of pga teaching professional but not all those guys will be able to bring what they're saying down to the lowest common denominator so you can digest it. And that's really what I'm getting at here. Regardless of whether they're PGA or not, what their stable looks like, you want to make sure as an individual, you are fully understanding and digesting the information that's given to you. And that goes into the instructor's communication skills, you know, being able to speak in public, being able to relate information on a very easy to comprehend level is really what sets, you know, the, these teachers apart they're able to get in their players minds understand how they want to learn and then execute a game plan for that individual yeah we're looking for uh, like you said someone that can explain concepts that might be a little uh, intense or a little bit complicated being able to break them down and communicate it to you as well as provide you constructive feedback and tailor the instruction to your individual needs yeah, because it's not, it's never about what, you know, the instructor, the fitter, whatever knows. It's about how much you're getting out of each of your interactions. Because remember, you're paying for these lessons. You're trying, you, you went to an instructor to try to get better at the game that we all love. Like being able to understand and make those changes and implement everything to then see those lower scores is really what's going to set, separate, you know, a, a, and they're all going to be good, but you know, somebody who's really good for you and somebody that's maybe not quite as good. And, you know, it, it just takes a little bit of trial and error to find that right person. Like I said earlier, kind of like finding a mechanic or a doctor. Yeah. And, and just continuing off the point you made, that's why you guys should take trial lessons. And by trial lessons, we mean go to a coach, take your first lesson. Don't pay for a full package right out of the gate. Take that first lesson and figure out What's that teaching? What's the instructor's teaching style? Does their communication skill line up with you? And is there a compatibility between you and that teaching professional that lines up with your goals in golf? And, and that's exactly what Bill was mentioning. Not every teaching professional is right for every single player, and you have to find the right one for you and then move forward with them. Definitely. It's well, well, well said. So like we were talking about, having that trial lesson really lets you establish whether there's a personal connection between you and that teaching professional. And that's huge moving forward. Definitely. Uh, having that personal connection with somebody, you know, if you can talk about 
to the golf swing, your goals for the day, implementation, but also have, in you know, create a, a person-to-person bond with them where you can talk about, you know, each other's families, what they do, you know, in their free time outside of golf or work or anything like that. When you really lock in on that good professional that you really enjoy learning from, you're going to have not just the golf stuff in line, but you're also going to have, you know, family stuff and you're going to be able to talk, you know, as he's your fifth buddy in your group, really. I mean, who who could say this better than you and me, Bill? I mean, we met at the driving range. You were the club fitter there. I joined in college and our personal connection obviously got off to a, a great start and our friendships continued from there on out. I mean, we've continued yeah, exactly. to support each other. For 10 years. So. Yeah. yeah, we've Definitely continued to more. support each other. And that's an ongoing support you're trying to look for when you create that personal connection with your coach is you want to make yeah. sure that regardless of if you're taking lessons from them as regular as you used to, see if you got someone that's willing to uh, help you out after you've you've stopped taking lessons or you just you've gotten to the point where you you've gotten better and you don't need lessons as often. It, but you can still send them videos of your golf swing and they'll still give you feedback. Shoot, maybe they'll golf with you on the side when they when they have free time or they'll grab a drink with you later. I mean that's 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 the personal connection that we want in the coaches that we're getting. At least that that's my belief. Having that ability to have a friend as a coach is awesome. And that Bill is Bill is my fitter, maybe not my swing coach, but I bounce stuff off him off the t- all the time. And he bounces stuff off of me, and that's Absolutely. that's what we're looking for for the right teaching professional for you. Because who who wouldn't want to enjoy the game even more and gain a friend out of it that you can you can share experiences and fun times in the future with? Absolutely, it's it's been awesome, you know the whole our entire relationship and it frankly continues to strengthen day in and day out and we're both absolute golf golf nuts if you guys yeah. haven't figured it out so it's <laughs> been uh it's it's been really nice and to jess point there yeah he'll send me stuff you know regarding new wedges putters what he's going through and jeff's a better player let's not kid ourselves um about like the intricacies and you know being able to express his thoughts uh not only an equipment side but a the game of golf side maybe he's got his head wrapped around something a little funny needs somebody to just kind of bounce stuff off of you know that's the kind of person you want to look for in a professional you know somebody that's not just gonna you know take your money and run it but is going to be there with you through the pro- through your progress in the game that's really what we're all looking for um and yeah love you bill um, I love you too, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, moving forward from that, I mean, if, if you're really struggling to find the right teaching professional for you, we talked about this before, looking at the player's stable or the, the, the teacher's stable. And when we say stable, we mean the players that have gone through this teaching professional's uh, platform. They, they, they have a style. They might be able to modify that style. And if you look at their feedback and reviews and maybe you know someone that's taking lessons from them, ask them questions because it's going to help you to get a better understanding of how that teaching professional teaches and what their teaching philosophy is, which is really important because there's different styles of, of swings. I mean, the the saying is swing your own swing, but there's also those fads that you hear on television or on tour where it's like, Hey, he's a stack and tilt player. Well, that's a teaching philosophy or, Hey, this guy does a Frisbee throw. That's Colin Morikawa, for example, or I want to swing it like Roy McIlroy as well. You should try and find someone that teaches a swing very similar to Roy McIlroy and, that is a hard swing to, to copy, by the way. A great one to copy, but a hard one to copy. He's a uh, unicorn in a sense. He's, he's a fantastic player. That, that one kind of comes with a little bit of inborn skill. But moving forward from that, that feedback in, re- in the reviews you're going to see is really going to help you to choose which coaches you do your trial lesson with. But that trial lesson is really important to helping you actually find the right coach for you. Absolutely. And... As far as a trial lesson goes, guys, it's it's kind of like, you know, if you've ever been on a blind date, you've never met this person, you've seen, heard some positive reviews from a couple of your buddies, things like that. You just got to go do it. Just go see what this person's about, you know, make a human connection. And if it works, great. If it's not, we make another phone call. Like, simple as that. Yeah. And, and, and another thing to think about, if you're that better player or if, if tech and tools or gadgets are really your thing and that's what you're like, hey, I can buy it, I can work on it, I can work with it. And it helps my swing. Finding a teaching professional that uses those in their actual platform is is someone you should look for. Um, Absolutely, and somebody that understands what they're saying to a T, 
because there's a lot of people out there that are just getting, you know, monitors becoming more and more accessible to basically everybody. TrackMan isn't, you know, the only game on the block anymore. Um, while it's, in my personal opinion, it's still the best. You know, we have GC Quads, we've got Flyscopes, we've got Mevos, we've got Encores, we've got, you know, Garmin's. There's accessibility for a lot of people to just have an overwhelming amount of data. But that's not beneficial if the instructor can't utilize explain to you what the heck is going on in your ball flight your swing anything like that you know so it's kind of a double-edged sword in terms of that technology you really got to have somebody that understands what they're looking at and how to process for you the changes to to make the swing more efficient essentially yeah and there's certifications for these things as well i mean there's certifications for understanding trackman data there's certifications for understanding swing catalyst data which if you don't know what swing catalyst it's a platform you stand on that helps us understand how you use ground forces and how that improves your swing and allows mm-hmm. more speed to be unlocked and stuff Absolutely. Like and and swing catalyst is something that came came around in the past couple of years and it's a pressure plates that shows how the, yeah. the individual is shifting weights, whether or not it's efficient, whatever or not it's sliding, swaying, even to the slightest amount that the naked eye wouldn't see. Swing catalyst is a a, a really, really useful tool, but you really need to understand what the heck's going on in that yeah. system. It's a lot of lines and charts, and if you don't understand it, it could leave you down a really bad rabbit hole. Yeah, very quickly. Yeah. Well, uh, I think we've talked a good bit about this topic today. Um, Bill, do you have anything else to add? Um, yeah. I would definitely like to throw in a little piece here, you know, about the cost and the value that they're getting from uh, lessons. So, You'll you'll see a wide variety of you know let's just say half an hour lesson costs and series of six package costs how you know maybe there's a little savings from going for a half an hour lesson to an hour lesson but generally speaking you need to find somebody that one is also going to you know give you that continued support that we talked about and two isn't just going to you know be there for gaining you know gaining money for himself you know he somebody that's yeah, you might have to pay, you know, 100, 150 bucks probably on the top end for a half an hour lesson uh, with some of the greatest instructors in the world. But the value that you're going to get out of that money is well, 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 well worth the cost. Yeah. So make sure that you really you know, think about the lesson and, and what you gained out of it and the value for the cost of the instructor. Um, if they have a massive stable for stable full of pga tour pros yeah they're probably going to be more expensive that's pretty obvious to everybody but it comes down to are you gaining the value out of that person and or, that's kind of a bad way to say that but are you getting value out of what that person is explaining to you or trying to teach you that's end goal are you becoming a better player and having a better understanding of this game of golf from the person that is trying to help you that is really the last thing i really want to talk about here is make sure you're getting your money's worth make sure you're out there grinding getting better at the game and playing the best golf of your life because that's what we all want to do uh for this week guys uh that'll wrap it up and it's great talking to you guys on finding a pg instructor and getting to the next level and we'll see you next time yeah see you guys have a good one